vissi d'arte, vissi d'amore. Wei yi shu, wei ai qing. For art, for love. I am an opera singer. When I'm singing on stage, no matter where, in the famous opera houses or concert halls around the world, I feel at home. I know I'm a messenger. I'm a messenger of delivering the beauty, music, love, and inspiration. So, I want to people in the theater during two hours of listening the music, my singing, they may relax, they may get touched, they may be enjoyed, they may get inspired. They go home, bring something back, joy and inspiration. In 1996, I left China, Shanghai, to go to New York City, to the West, to pursuing my international operatic career. In 2012, I came back to my hometown, Shanghai, under the China's 1000 Talents Program, Qian Jihua, to be a professor in Shanghai Conservatory Vocal Department. Now I'm teaching, although I'm still singing around the world for operas, concerts, but mainly I am teaching now, I'm a professor teaching in Shanghai Conservatory for the young singers, young performers. I offer guidance for their life, for their career. Few students really understand how to take, what effort to take them to go to world stage to become an international professional opera singer and artist. Few singers may know the truth about the life, my life. Now I'm telling you, being opera singer, being an international artist, of course, here's the truth, you have to sacrifice, you have to work, you have to love what you love. You have to love the work that you have to commit yourself to work on that for the rest of your life. Here's my love affair with art, with singing, with music, with opera. I always liked singing when I was very young, since I was six years old. So when I was 14 years old, I was finally selected by hundreds of among hundreds of children to, to be in the pre prestigious children's choir of Shanghai Children's Palace. Shanghai is Shao Nian Gong. So I was discovered by Mr. Wu, my very first teacher, Wu Guojun, to select me to be a leading singer, a soloist, very first time singing a Chinese folk song, Jasmine Flower, Mo Li Hua. I was very excited. And I was very nervous too. So, because I love singing so much, I always want to sing. And one night in the winter snowy night in Shanghai, when I was 16, I rode a bicycle back from the rehearsal to my home. I got a very serious accident, bicycle accident, that I broke my left knee. So, I had to go to the hospital for very serious operation. After that, when I woke up on hospital bed, my first question to ask my voice teacher, Mr. Wu, was, will I be able to stand up and sing again on stage? Of course, I recovered. I did sing. And I wanted to sing more and more in order to let me become a professional fine musician. My teacher suggested that I should learn piano, but I'm from a very humble family. My parents could not afford a piano for me that time. My father was middle-aged at that time. He worked so hard, but he still could not afford a piano for me. So we find a way. Finally, one day the piano arrived on my humble Shikumenling house on Amphi Road, and near Changshu Road, not very far from here. So the brand new piano 
Changjiang piano made in China. Good quality, very good quality. <laughs> and I was so excited. But when the piano arrived, my father, I saw my father pull out, pulled out last penny from his wallet. My tears turns out. And I promised myself that I must work very hard. I must study very hard. And also there is saying, means where there is a will, there is a way. Practice makes perfect. So I practiced every day, even during the school holidays in Shanghai Conservatory. And many nights when the lights turned off in the school, but you still can hear the voice singing through the window of North Building of Shanghai Conservatory. <laughs> the candlelight can be still seen. So I committed myself to this art for my rest of my life. I have gained so much success at very early age, like uh, winning the voice competition in Paris and starring in the movie version of uh, Puccini's opera, Madame Butterfly, and also being represented by one of America's top artist management, Columbia artist management called Cami, and also I signed a contract with Sony Classical, and I also had a DVD and CD released in 1996 of Christmas concert in Vienna with Placido Domingo and pop star Michael Bolton. But I have not done any staged opera, so I have to sacrifice all those glamorous status, you know, uh, those famous glamorous lifestyle of flowers and magazine covers, photo shows, five-star hotels, limousines, to start from zero for the art I love, for stage opera performances. So, short after I made a successful of this film, traveled around the world, I came back to New York City. I moved to New York City at 27 age. And I had to audition for very major opera, soprano roles, but for very small opera houses. The first opera was Omaha, middle of nowhere in America. Nothing but famous for steak. <laughs> so I got to the role. So I got to the role, Susanna in Marriage of Figaro by Mozart. This is the longest soprano role in opera. The rehearsal started. I worked, I worked with those young singers, all from training very well from the Juilliard Opera Center, Juilliard School, the Juilliard School Opera Center. And because of culture gap, I also lacking of professional training of acting skill. So I did a lot of mistakes, like when people are singing, I could not, should not move, but I moved. And I even stepped on the toes on them. They think that I made these mistakes on purpose. They thought that I was acting like a diva. But I was a diva in some way. But it was a real mistake, okay? So the opera was successful at the end. My very first opera, staged opera in America, in my beginning of career. And my role of Susanna was very successful. But the painful process, four weeks, for opera production was remarkable in my life. I had ups and downs like most artists, but I never gave up. I knew the way down deep. I would never give up because I believed in myself and I had faith, I had love. My most sacrifice point was with my parents because especially for two years at the beginning, I didn't see them at all. When I was living in New York or traveling around the world, I called my mother on the phone. She always cried over the phone. They didn't understand why I'm doing this, away from home, being alone, no supporting system. My father was very quiet, but I know he loves me very deeply. So they had hope, just like I did. There was a hope for future. And also, I sacrificed for friendships, emotional support, and I, because of a cultural gap, I had 
no close friends in the West to talk about my problems, my difficulties and feelings because everybody was busy. And uh, those sacrifices I did just because for this love. I never got married. I never had a child. Maybe, perhaps, there's only one big love in my heart. So I committed to this love for the rest of my life. When I lived in New York City, I got up nine o'clock every day in the morning. I read the philosophical or history books for one hour, uh, like a Fu Lei, Fu Lei Jia Shu. This was a wonderful book. This is a wonderful book. And I learned so much knowledge and uh, information and understanding of art from this book. And also, because being an opera singer, you have to go beyond your uh, voice technique aspects. You have to also have more profound philosophical understanding of the art. So, opera singers, we're singing in Italian, French, German, besides the Chinese. So I have to learn all those languages. And I also have to work with most, uh, a lot of different uh, vocal uh, uh, coaches in New York City and uh, when I travel around the world. And after, I have to translate everything word for word for each song, for each rose. It's very boring work, but I have to do it. I have to, I translate them to English. And if I don't really understand, I translate them to Chinese also. <laughs> yes. And uh, also, I have to research a lot of uh, listening recordings, books in Towerex in New York City until midnight, and go to the Met stage. I have a Met artist member card, which I'm very proud of. I still have it. I go to the backstage, and I listen for 10 minutes with those great, famous world opera singers singing there, learning their acting and their singing technique and their interpretation of the rose of the music. Voice lesson is the most important thing. With my voice teacher, Daniel Farrell, 94 years old man. So he's the master of many renowned teachers now and many famous opera singers like Anna Morfo, Catherine Battle. So I was very fortunate to study with him, with his old school way, which is very traditional, strict, solid, and then Teach, he taught me a lot of things much more beyond the voice and the language. He taught me about the background, the history background, and the styles of different composers of the different musics. When you meet the right teacher at the right time, your wisdom and your understanding comes out. I was very fortunate. And also as a singer, you have to work on your body and keep fit and stem, stamina. Stem, stamina. Stamina. So, anyway, so I work. I don't love uh, sports, but I have to go to work on that. And all those preparing, you know, it's very important. I go to Europe many times when I'm not having engagement, when I am not singing, and I go to Italy to go to the museum, go to the language school, to working with the musicians and to speak Italian, to understand the culture and the mentality, and go to England to study Baroque music, which I love very much, with the specialists. So, and a lot of re everyday reading, practicing, translating, exercising, the vocal, vocal, vocalization. It's very boring, 20 minutes. <laughs> but I have to do it. Because you have to prepare well. If you don't prepare well, if I don't prepare well, I feel guilty. I feel guilty to Mozart. I feel guilty to Handel. I feel guilty to my art. So this is my choice. And this is my commitment to the art I love. With singing, with opera, with art, with mu museum, music. So, with music. So, this is purpose of my life. This is meaningful life. When I sing on stage, I feel I'm a messenger. I'm a delivering my message of beauty, of love, of inspiration. One light, me, and piano only, and I just sing, and you listening. Yes. 
fissi d'arte, fissi d'amore, we ishu, we aichin, for art, for love. Is it worth to the work to sacrifice for it? If you find such, if you found such great love in your life, would you do the same? <laughs> 